yourself high five. I be the king of the rock, the wrist none higher. Fuck Jay Z, y'all should call me sire. I won't stop rocking till I retire. I got me on rich, y'all got niggas fired. If you follow my Instagram or happen to know me in my personal life, then you would probably know that I'm a huge fan of pro wrestling. If you follow my YouTube channel, then you would obviously know that I'm really into rap and hip hop history. And for the longest, I really wanted to combine the two into my channel. And I felt like this was the perfect opportunity telling the story of one of my favorite wrestlers and favorite rappers. I'm going to keep this intro short and sweet, but I would first like to thank you guys for coming to see this because you guys can be doing a million other things right now, but instead, you're here with me, and I appreciate that. If you guys like the content, you guys should like, comment, and subscribe to help the channel grow. Also, follow my Instagram too. That would be greatly appreciated. Also, let me know where you are tuning in from, represent where you're from, all right, man, without further ado, let's get it. Diamond Dallas Page was a very popular wrestler in the 1990s when he was wrestling with WCW, also known as World Championship Wrestling. DDP started his in-ring wrestling career in his mid-30s, which is relatively late for a pro wrestler, and according to DDP, the people behind the scenes at WCW didn't initially see anything in him because of his age. This didn't deter him, and DDP would create his famous finishing move called the Diamond Cutter, which most times came out of nowhere and caught the audience by surprise. Despite his age, DDP still managed to have a successful pro wrestling career and be a multiple time world champion within WCW along with holding other championships within that company and other promotions. Now to Jay Z and he actually kind of has a similar story in a rap sense. Initially, Jay-Z wasn't getting the looks that he felt like he deserved from record labels due to his age, and this is when Jay-Z, Dame, and Biggs went on to create their own thing, which ended up being Rockefeller Records. Jay's first album, Reasonable Doubt, wasn't a success out of the gate, but the album, along with Jay's popularity, grew over time. Despite the labels initially fronting on Jay-Z, he persevered and turned Rockefeller Records into something truly special. If you want to know more about Rockefeller Records, I literally have a whole series dedicated to it and I'll put a link in the description for you. Right now, you might be asking, well, what happened between Jay-Z and DDP? Well, it all started over the cutter, diamond, whatever you want to call it, hand sign. Jay-Z is known for throwing this up to represent the rock, Rockefeller Records, but it's said to also be a double entendre for the slang term of a rock and a diamond, and there might be some other you know, like representations of what it means, but that's just, off the top of my head, that's just what I think that it represents. People who believe in the Illuminati, they can think otherwise, but I'm not really gonna get into all that or whatever. DDP throws it up to represent like a diamond, you know, like a diamond cutter. And I mean, his ring name was Diamond Dallas Page. And after like he would do it, there would be like a bang and like the crowd, like they like loved it. I will say that there is a difference between how like Jay-Z does it and how DDP does it. DDP forms a diamond and then he has his fingers spread apart while Jay-Z forms a diamond but has his fingers put together. How DDP even came up with the diamond hand sign was that he was leaving the WCW power plant, which was a place that he used to frequent to train for wrestling, and a guy named Ron Reese suggested that DDP should throw up the diamond before he did his finishing maneuver, the diamond cutter. Now the trouble arises between Jay-Z and DDP when in the mid-2000s, Jay-Z was served papers to him saying that he illegally adopted DDP's diamond cutter hand symbol. The suit accused Jay-Z and Rockefeller Records of trademark and copyright infringement as well as misappropriation of the hand symbol. DDP was seeking an injunction meaning that Jay-Z would be prohibited from using the gesture and unspecified monetary damages. DDP's lawyer claimed that DDP created the sign back in 1996 and quote unquote copyrighted it years ago. 
while I was doing research, I came across a post that DDP made on Twitter in response to a TMZ article about the case and he did provide proof that he did copyright the symbol and it looks like it was first used in 1998. DDP's lawyer also said that people would come up to DDP and ask him if he was letting Jay-Z use it or if he had licensed it to him. DDP's lawyer said that he first took the matter directly to Jay-Z's lawyer, but they were not receptive, saying that the real issue was how Diamond Dallas Page was using Jay-Z's symbol inappropriately. Dallas's lawyer said that he provided Jay-Z's people with magazine covers, various DDP merchandise, and video footage dating back to the mid-1990s showing Page throwing the cutter. And DDP's lawyer further said, if you look at Jay-Z's encore video, you can see fans using the diamond cutter sign and in a video of Diamond Dallas, if you only looked at the fans from both those tapes, you think it's the same person performing. Jay-Z and Rockefeller Records use this symbol to promote themselves, to promote their artists, to promote their music, and to promote their fan base. People have come to recognize Paige by this symbol, and the way that it's being used by Jay-Z and Rockefeller is taking value away from it and creating confusion upon the public. Now, whether you think that this lawsuit is ridiculous or not, it's completely up to you, but in 2007, the matter was settled out of court by both parties and is said to have included an undisclosed amount paid to DDP. I soon learned that this wouldn't be the last time that DDP would sue somebody over the diamond sign because he would do the same thing with the band that I'm about to put on screen. However, the thing between Jay-Z and DDP didn't stop there because in 2018, TMZ reported that Jay-Z had applied to use the diamond gesture throughout several mediums ranging from music, video, TV, and or film. TMZ falsely reported that DDP didn't have a copyright and that's when DDP responded on Twitter like I showed earlier with him providing proof that he did. To my knowledge, nothing has really came like of this 2018 situation and DDP did an interview with the Flip the Script podcast at the beginning of 2022 and he said that he was all good with Jay-Z and that the matter has been resolved. Y'all are gonna have to let me know in the comments what you guys think of this situation and let me know of like some more situations that involve rap and wrestling that I can go in depth with about. But going back to what this video is about, some people might even bring up the DDP Nirvana thing because his WCW theme sounded a lot like the famous Nirvana song, Smells Like Teen Spirit. And this is something DDP has talked about numerous times. So if you guys want to know more about that, then it's just a quick YouTube Google search away to find out more about that. All in all, this is about all I have for you guys today. Let me know what you guys thought of the video in the comment section below. I love you guys with all my heart. Peace.